Nicole and I'm a math teacher and today I'm going to give you a lesson on the vocabulary of algebra. Start with these two math problems behind me. They're two pieces of math that look very very similar but they've got different names. Notice that this one doesn't have an equal sign and this one does. This thing over here without an equal sign is called an expression. And generally, expressions are given to you when you're learning a new skill. In this case, I'm going to be talking to you about how to combine like terms. Later, when you're more comfortable with combining like terms, we're going to do something like this. This thing's called an equation. An equation has an equal sign. And an equation you can actually get a little bit of satisfaction out of. You can do that math thing like x equals, in this case x is going to equal a 5, once you figure out the steps on solving these things. So what that means is for these two math problems, you're going to have two different sets of directions. This one over here, you can only do what's called simplifying it, which means using the order of operations to make a math problem smaller. Like I said, with an equal sign, you can get a little bit of satisfaction. You can actually solve the problem. You can figure out what x equals. So when you get a math problem with an equal sign, the directions will be solve. What I want you to notice, I was talking a little bit earlier about x equals this and x equals that. Well, x has a special name. x is called a variable. So this is a variable, this is a variable, and this is a variable right here. And variables, what they are, are letters standing in the place of numbers. With the expression, we're never going to be able to figure out what x equals. We're just going to be learning some new skills. Over here, with an equal sign, we're actually going to be able to someday figure out what x equals. Okay? Now that you understand the difference between an expression and an equation, I'm going to use these expressions right here to give you three more important math words to know. Terms, coefficients, and constants. These are words that all your math teachers are going to use in order to talk to you about how to work a math problem. So let's start with this expression up here on the top. An expression is made of terms. Terms are pieces of math that are separated by a plus or minus sign and they can be bound up in times. I'll explain what that means in a second. So with this expression right here, we've got three terms. The first one is negative 2x. The second one is positive 3y. The third one is negative 8. So I'm going to write those over here. I got negative 2x, positive 3y, and negative 8. So I want to remind you that whatever sign is directly to the left of a number belongs to that number. So this minus sign belongs to the 2x, this plus sign belongs to the 3, this minus sign belongs to the negative 8. So terms can be broken up into smaller pieces of math yet. We already talked about variables. Variables are the letters that are standing in the place of numbers. So the numbers that happen to be stuck on to the letters, remember that a number stuck onto a letter means that those two things are times together. A number stuck onto a letter is called a numerical coefficient. I don't use numerical coefficient too often, but I do use the word coefficient. And that means a number stuck onto a letter. So in this expression right here, we've got two numerical coefficients. We've got a negative 2 and a 3. So I'm going to put that under coefficients, a negative 2 and a positive 3. The last piece of math that's going to be in any math problem is the constants. So in this expression, we have one constant, and that's this negative 8. So I'm going to put that negative 8 under the constants column. Let's 
let's try another one. So we have another expression right here. This expression has three terms, here, here, and here. The first term is 3y squared. The second term is negative 2x. That minus sign belongs to that term. The last term is a 1 half. So these terms are made up of coefficients, constants, and variables. The y squared and the 2, I'm sorry, the y and the x, those are your variables. The numbers stuck on the front of those are your numerical coefficients. So we've got 2, we've got a 3, and a negative 2. This little one-half hanging out all by itself, that's a constant. The reason it's called a constant is because we can't times it by anything, like this little x here, to change its value. So it's constantly one-half, nothing we can times it by to make it any different. Any guesses to how many terms here? Four, right? So we got a 7x, oops, no, yeah, we got a 7, let's use the red, an x, a 4, and a negative 5x. So those are our four terms in this expression. 7, x, 4, and negative 5x. So I'm sure you know by now what the constants are. We got a 7 and a 4. I'll write those down. And one of the numerical coefficients is pretty easy to figure out. It's this little, uh, where's my green? Negative 5 right here. There's two coefficients up here. One of them happens to be hidden. Let's write down this negative 5 and figure out where the other one is. It's right here. See it? <laughs> It's an invisible one. Anytime you see a little naked variable all by itself, what it really means is there is an invisible one stuck on the front of it. And when you're learning to combine like terms, which is what we're going to be doing a little bit later, it's really handy to know that that little one is there and make it visible when you need it. So the second numerical coefficient in this expression is a 1. Okay, this last expression, which is really tricky, it looks like there are maybe four terms, maybe even five. Actually, there's three terms up here. A term is any piece of math separated by a plus or minus, not in parentheses. This minus sign is inside the parentheses, so what that means is because this whole thing is bound up in times by this 3 stuck onto these parentheses right here, that whole stinking thing is a term. So in this math problem right here, this expression, we've got three terms. This great big term and these other two terms which you're already familiar with. So the three terms up here are 3 times the quantity x minus 1, negative 4x, because remember, whatever sign is to the left of a number belongs to that number, and a positive 2. So the terms here, okay, we got three terms, and now we got to pick out the numerical coefficients. There's two. The two, two numerical coefficients in this instance are 3 and negative 4. The constants, the numbers which won't vary, there's only one here. It looks like there's two, but really there's only one. That constant is the number 2. 
Now that you're comfortable with the terminology of algebra, watch my next video to learn how to combine some like terms. Thanks. <laughs>